The Port of Los Angeles, a focus, as you know, looking more like a ghost town over the weekend. That is despite Joe Biden's promise to move cargo around the clock in an attempt to clear some of the choke points clogging our supply chain. Dozens of cargo ships there and elsewhere waiting offshore for their turn to unload. And then containers piling up on the docks and then those that can reach it here. And it goes on and on and on from there. I mean, it's it's clogged. Some economists now sounding the alarm, citing the supply log jam is forcing gas prices to go even higher. 30 year high inflation across the board, a labor shortage and continued COVID-19 fears along the way. In a new study, they're warning the U.S. is on the precipice of a recession. Kathy, or Cassie Smedley is the executive director of America Rising PAC. So let's get into this a little bit, Cassie. So the, the politics of this are what? Why, why can't the White House just tell us what's going on? <laughs> stop the blame game, the excuse make, oh, I'm going to make them work around the clock. W what's the deal? Well, that's exactly the problem. They would have to take some ownership over this. They would have to take some blame if they were actually serious about fixing it. But they're not willing to do that. And Harris, you and I know where this whole domino effect of, that you just described starts. This would be a moot point if we had a made in America supply chain. Mm. And we were working on that over the last four years. And so the Biden admin came in and what, what was one of the first things they did? They canceled the Keystone Excel. And then the Democrats in Congress incentivized people to stay home instead of getting back in the office or back on the line. And then the Biden admin won't say boo at China. So we're beholden to them. So all of these things stack up to us being in this debacle. And they're not willing to admit that any one of those things could have helped us uh, loosen what we're seeing happen, whether that's with the boats out at sea, whether that's with the workers actually to unload them, or the gas prices, or what you're paying at the store. And that's got to be where this conversation starts with them saying, you know, let's try something different. And they're not willing to do that because politically, that would be admitting an error. So what's wrong with Made in America with this current administration? Like, how, how would that be a problem? It's a great question. But what we've seen, I mean, literally yesterday when Jin Psaki was pressed about China circling the earth with a, a, a vessel that could have a nuclear reactor on it, she said, well, competition's good. Why are they so afraid wow. of saying no? We are the United States of America. We are going to be first. We are going to be in charge of our businesses and our supply chain. There's some connection here that they have that they're not admitting to. And I think that's important to talk about. But I also have to tell you, you know, things that are made in America right now aren't having supply chain issues. I was just talking with someone, part of your Fox family, who's got a book coming out. And they say, our book's made in America. That'll be under your Christmas tree there in time go. for Christmas. And so those are the conversations that we do need to be having. And if this White House isn't willing to get serious with all of the factors at play, not just American businesses, but all of their supply chain issues down the line, and, and be a real, you know, go to China and say, if you don't cooperate with us, then we are going to do X, Y, or Z. And they so far have been unwilling to do that. And I think that's why you're seeing this domino effect of the supply chain. Wow. Jin Saki, competition is good. I wish you felt the same way about questions. Like, oh, questions are good. No. <laughs> uh, let's broaden this out to a power panel now. Thank you, Cassie. Uh, I, I really wanted to delve into that with you first. And then let's get the Democrat perspective. Let's bring Richard Fowler on board, Fox News contributor. So Richard, in this conversation, uh, Jin Saki saying competition is good, but but we need answers to the supply chain. We'll, we'll we'll agree with her that there is something at play here. And as Cassie just laid it out, your rebuttal. Well, thanks for having me, Harris. Uh, and listen, let's be very clear. We do have a supply chain issue in this country, and I do believe that the White House is a little bit slow to respond to the fact that we're seeing Why? the price of the pump go high. We're seeing the price of bacon being too high. But let's understand that this is a problem that's far bigger than just the White House or just Joe Biden. This is a global supply chain breakdown. Just a couple of weeks ago, our friends across the pond in the United Kingdom were dealing with the fact they had no fuel to pump to, to put in their cars. So we're dealing with a global well, supply chain. Richard, issue with all due respect, do. I don't think anybody is asking us to live like anybody else. Like we're no, America. No, not. We're the United States just... of America. And I feel bad for the people in Europe. They've got their own relationships yeah. and treaties and things that they can work out with energy, so on and so forth. But we're America. I mean, 
China should be putting us first. Think about all the goods we buy. Why, why is everybody else in line with us? Why are we in line? Why is competition good, Jen Psaki? Well, fair, fair, fair enough. I, I say that to make the larger point that what happened at the beginning of this pandemic in early 2020 is the entire world economy shut down. It didn't mean that people stopped ordering sofas or people stopped ordering, you know, laptops. It no, just it meant that people weren't making these products or people weren't producing these microchips. And so now we have an economy where the or demand is still high, but we're still behind on supply. And as a result of that, we're dealing with these supply chain issues. And yes, though, like I said at the but beginning, why not of this, made the White in House America? I want to go back to Cassie because it seems like so much of what Richard is talking about, you guys are in agreement. It's a hot mess sandwich. We get that. And potentially even a dangerous one because we're also coupled with China through our pharmaceuticals. So if there's a slowdown there, mm -hmm. there are going to be some people with standing preconditions like diabetes that are going to be waiting for their medicine. I don't want to overblow this, but cargo is cargo. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and we're even seeing with schools, local schools that can't get food to to their kids That's for their school example. lunch program. So in America, we don't have schools. This isn't just about presents on your Christmas tree. But yeah, I, we all agree that there's a supply and a, supply chain issue. It should be we should empower American made products here. But also, where's the foresight to say what can we control? Maybe back in January, February, March, instead of the Democrats putting forth a multi billion dollar proposal that incentivized workers to stay home, they should have said, how do we get workers back in the office and back on the line? Because down the road, that's what we're going to need. And instead, now you've got folks who are having to deal with that backlog of not even having the manpower to uh, alleviate these issues. So those are the types of things that the administration but, but, yeah. could have been well, working that's on. Really yeah, being felt, I, that I've opened the lines open um, in my social media American to rescue. talk with truckers specifically to find out where the clog points are. And what they're telling me is, you know, they see a lot of help wanted signs in terms of getting their uh, their goods unloaded. Like the companies are short on people. So there's slowness all the way down the line here. But we should be first in line in terms of getting those goods to us and not so much competition with the rest of the world. Richard, I'm only picking on that one point that you made because, again, we're not Europe. We're only us, thankfully. All right, good to see you both.